Hello, everybody. Welcome. We are going to be talking about loss and grief, in specific, the loss of a child and a loved one. But, you know, grief can be anything. It can be the loss of a home. It could be the loss of a business. It can be even moving. Grief comes in a lot of different packages. But the one that I want to deal with specifically today is the type of grief that's attached to a loved one, specifically a child or someone who is close to us, like our spouse or our parents, someone who is a very close friend and we've had to endure uh, feeling the loss of that person being present so that we can connect with them in a human way. So, a lot of us have different ideas about what happens in the afterlife, and it can be as diverse as we are. It can go from whatever your religion believes to how you feel as a spiritualist. Some people want to contact psychic mediums. Some people want to believe that their loved one is in the arms of their savior, in the arms of God, however, you see your creator, God, wherever your beliefs are. But that's not the part of grief I want to talk about. And it seems like from what I've experienced, no matter what we really truly believe, we can believe it with all of our heart, mind, soul, spirit, and understand it. But it doesn't take away from the sting of feeling that loss of the presence of our loved one and in specific a child which is the one that i am going to focus on the most and there's a reason for that if you've seen my videos before or if you know me in any way shape or fashion you know that i experienced the loss of my sweet daughter about a year and a half ago and I'm at the point where I'm okay with talking about it. I've done some writing and I'm doing some extensive writing right now, but um, I think that month that she was in the hospital in California was one of the hardest. And I thought this is the worst it could pro possibly even get, but I was wrong. It got a little bit more intense over time. I feel like I experienced a little bit of a delayed grief because I had to go through a lot of the arrangements and travel and, you know, getting through the funeral issues and encountering friends and loved ones and those who knew her, which was, you know, um, a difficult thing, but also a precious thing as well. I heard a lot of comments about how my daughter affected their lives and how much she was going to be missed. And all of those things uh, really comforted me and gave me strength during that time. But most of my grieving as what I've experienced happened afterwards when everyone else went about their day and about their lives and about you know, whatever it is that they do in life, everyone has the world that spins and they keep evolving and life is always changing and, and um, you know, they go on with whatever those things are that they're doing. And all of a sudden, when you're grieving the loss of a loved one and specifically a child, you feel like there's almost like a delayed intensity, at least for me. And a lot of the grief started to really kick in and the difficulty of maneuvering some of those waters um, kind of kicked in a little bit later. And so I won't say that I'm not completely through the hardest part of the process because I'm not, but I'm getting there. And, you know, previous to losing and having the passing of my daughter and that experience, my family and I also experienced the passing of my son, my oldest son, while he was serving in the armed services in the armed forces on the East Coast while we were in California. And he was very young and newly enlisted for only about a year. 
and serving his country, which I'm very proud of, but never in my wildest dreams did I ever imagine that I would be in this position. At first, I thought it couldn't possibly be. And, you know, with both of my son and my, my daughter, I feel that way sometimes still. It couldn't possibly be. But some of it became an adventure, and that's some things that um, I will be talking about later on and probably writing about. But today, I really want to deal with some of the facets of grief. If you are going through the loss of a child in specific, it can be applied to the loss of your spouse or to the loss of a dear friend or to the loss of one of your parents, which is something that I experienced very early on. My father passed away when he was in his late 50s, which is very, very early and that was due to lung cancer. And then my mother in 2014, and she had um, advanced stages of dementia and Alzheimer's, which is um, something that I'm passionate about as far as the research goes, because we see so many of our loved ones going through that type of illness as they approach uh, later stages of life. So. You know, with all of those things, you know, we we all have losses and they can take different shapes and forms. They could be loss of a business, which I've experienced in the past, the loss of a home, the loss of, um, uh, what else do I want to, th a, it could be a friend just saying goodbye. They can't be uh, only just passing away, but sometimes that goodbye is something that is necessary because people come into our lives for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And if they're just reason or season people, we may end up saying goodbye. And so those losses are also things that we grieve. So anyway, I want to get to the intensity of the loss of a child or someone who is very, very close to you. And, um, that could be your spouse and it could be one of your parents or someone who is a dear friend. So uh, specifically children though, for some reason, this particular loss is one that goes so deep and so profound and it is so difficult to maneuver sometimes just going through the waters and the ups and downs of grief. It feels like you are in a ship sailing on a sea and sometimes that sea is very calm and sometimes it is rocking the boat and along with all of those emotions that we feel we can't help but express things and show things on the outside because if we don't we're suppressing them on the inside and then we end up in a situation where we have prolonged grief. So it's really important to note that when you're going through the grieving process to show how you feel and talk about how you feel, especially with someone that you can trust, either a professional or someone who is actually willing to listen because not every person wants to hear all of your grief story because they're not always going to understand. So you hear things like, just get over it. This will get easier. They're in a better place, blah, blah, blah. All of those things. If there's anything that you need, I'll, you know, be there. And whereas those things are all very compassionate and loving, you know, we know according to whatever our spiritual beliefs are, where our loved one might be or could be, but although they might be in our mindset in a better place, or maybe their pain is relieved and you know you hear the expression, just be happy and grateful, they're not in pain anymore. And yes, you know, definitely we're happy and grateful for all of those things, but Although that may be true, that they could be in a better place, we are not. We are not. It is not a better place to know that your loved one is not there to laugh with, to cry with, to talk with, to be in communication with, 
we miss the presence of that person in human body and the love that comes back and forth, the exchange of love that comes with that presence in our lives. And then of course we have the history with that person. In the case of my children, I raised five children as a single mother for many years of my life. I invested a lot in my children. My heart was invested a lot in my children and the strength that I needed to take care of those children and keep them safe was a lot to deal with. We had a five um, children with a mom situation, all the six of us, pretty much against the world. And I carried the world on my shoulders. And if I were to have the opportunity to do that in the same situation, the same scenario again, and have my children and be a single mom, I would do it because they are the most precious things in my life. It's like the umbilical cord that was attached to my child inside of my body is an umbilical cord that will be a part of our lives and my life forever. I will love my children forever. And I always tell them, I love you to heaven and back. I will love you forever. And those truths are, are things that I repeat over and over again because love is the highest of vibration and the highest essence that there is that our creator has given to us. So when that sense or feeling of love has been pulled away from us, there is almost like a snapping that goes on that you feel like that umbilical cord has been stretched further than you would ever like it to be stretched. And whereas it will never completely break, you feel like, um, could I be stretched any further than this? I mean, it's really, really difficult to maneuver and navigate. And especially when there are others that are around us that really don't understand because they haven't had our experience. So as we experience grief, I have made some notes, so excuse me as I look down, because I really didn't want to forget some of these things, and I try to keep my videos 20 minutes or under. Good luck, okay? But I really want to kind of interject what we experience as we go through this type of grief, and what it's like, and what grief is supposed to be like. So these are some of the notes that I jotted down. One is that grief has its own flow and its own timing. There is no specific time that you can put on yourself or others can put upon you or that you should put upon others regarding the grief of the loss of their loved one, especially a child. Everyone has their own process and their own timing in the way that they grieve the loss of especially their child. We have history with that person. We have, even if it's the loss of a child that was within our body and we never got a chance to have a history. It is the idea of what that was going to be like. We lose a part of our dream for that person. And it's the same when you lose a child and that child has passed away later on in life, we lose a part of the dream that goes with that child, whether they're going to get married or have children. And eventually, you know, we have grandchildren and family passing, you know, the baton to younger ones and them growing up and watching some of that happen. We lose that thing that we have projected for the child, whether it is that or what they might be when they get a little bit older and the anticipation of all of their potential. That becomes a part of our potential and something that becomes a part of our evolution as a parent. So don't let anybody tell you you should be over your grief by now because you grieve in your own timing. Okay, so grief of the loss of a close loved one or especially a child, um, is felt to the degree that we have loved. And it goes without saying, we love our children. If it's a spouse, if it's a parent, we love our spouses, we love our parents 
to the depth of what that love is and has been. That is the depth and more that we will grieve because grief is attached to the love that we have and the feelings we have for that person. So we, we can't really put or place um, a time frame and we can't place an intensity because it will be intense. Love is vast and huge and dynamic and deep and wide. It has breadth and width. And, you know, the Bible talks about understanding what the breadth and width and, um, you know, what the dynamics of love really is. And, you know, to me, it goes beyond understanding. To me, the grief that you experience is according to that love. And what it is, is we're carrying the love that's within us that is for that particular person. And we are not able to give that love human in a human way and that connection to that person any longer. So it feels very cut off. So therefore, it becomes something that we are sad about and there is a great deal of pain surrounding that. So, you know, if you're grieving very hard and fast, if you're grieving very deep and wide, that is the depth of love that you have had for that particular person. So the intensity of grief will ebb and flow and come out with all different types of emotions. And that could be tears, anger, feeling heavy, feeling a sense of depression. It can come out with anxiety and also the fear of further loss. And I've experienced all of those things. And those things are, um, I won't say normal to have, but they are normal and usual to experience with grief. And that doesn't mean we won't need um, some assistance or help with some of our grief during that period of time, like counseling or somebody who understands what grief is about. So grief also, I'll say, takes a lot of patience. You need to be patient with yourself and loved ones hopefully will understand that they're going to need to be patient with you as well. This is not an easy process to just go through and get over. You don't just decide you're gonna be happy tomorrow. Life is too short. We're just going to live it to the fullest. Some days you may feel like getting out and doing things. Other days you may feel like jumping in bed and putting the covers over your head. Some days you may belly over and cry over a memory and other days you may laugh. And, and think about that same memory and smile and say, isn't it awesome that we had that time together? So there's no real time frame in one's grief journey, but I will say this, if you're finding that there's an extended grief, meaning it's lasting really a long time, meaning the intensity never seems to get to the point where it levels out where you're living, part of you know your normal life that could mean that you're internalizing it so much and not expressing it enough that it has been given the opportunity to get to that even keel kind of space i can't say that i'm completely there regarding my daughter but regarding my son yes i do go through grief sometimes i do cry sometimes but there's kind of like an easing of some of that intensity of grief. But if you're finding that it's lasting a really, really long time, like maybe four to five years, and the intensity has never changed, it could be an indication that you are suffering from extended grief and a grief that's going unexpressed. And that's a real big clue that you really need to get to someone who is specialized and really understands how to counsel a grief situation and help you through. It's not a bad thing to need help. I just want to reiterate this. Don't suffer through it alone. You don't have to do it alone. There are people that will not understand, but with that said, there will be people who are understanding. 
okay? A great listening ear is of such great value. To have a good friend, to have a good counselor, a medical professional, someone who can help you and ease some of the anxiety and some of the grief and depression is just worth their weight in gold. So utilize everything that you have that's available to you. If you ever need help, if you need someone to talk to, you can always connect with me. I'll leave my contact information in the description box below. And I hope this has been a little bit helpful for you. And who can talk about these issues in one 20 minute video? It's very difficult. So there's a lot to unpack and there are a lot of diverse ways that people grieve. It is as diverse as we are as people and we're a diverse people. We're a di diverse humanity and it goes along with culture as well. And that's a whole other video. So I just wanted to interject this video so you can understand a little bit about what I'm going through and what you might be going through as well. And with all that said, I'm just going to say I am really loving you from here. God bless you. The Creator just bless you with as much healing and help and hope that possibly can be rendered to you. And I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.